day viewers, Walter here. I want to talk to you a little bit about an upcoming project I've been thinking about, namely this old stove. I discussed how I wanted to start burning stuff, stuff in it, like that wood, for example, or anything. I've considered making my own charcoal. But I want to explain the problem, the things I need to work out with this project here on the stove. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Well, actually, I'll put on my GoPro. All right, I got my GoPro on. I'm gonna start by explaining the, what uh, some of the problems I've encountered here with my stove. When I brought this stove home, it was loaded in the back of a railroad truck, and the truck was literally, literally overloaded. It already had a lot of tools and stuff on there, but this stove weighs—I'm just guessing—maybe a thousand pounds. It comes apart in three different sections. This top bell looking piece is just sitting on there. It lifts off. That top piece alone weighs, oh, I'm gonna guess 250 to 300 pounds. It is heavy. Middle piece is taller. Let's give it a, a weight of over 300. So we're talking about 600 just for here and here. The bottom, gonna be the same as the top. We're talking about 900 pounds. The bottom, the, the base, which I'm pointing at with the shovel here with my GoPro. What the heck is that? Piece of banding material. Anyway. To assemble this thing, it's laying in the back of my truck in three separate pieces, four pieces counting the base. I can't pick it up off to get it off the truck. I had to use a boom on the back of the truck to lift the pieces out here. And that was, Lord, I know that's been 20 years ago. Well, I just set it up out here in the backyard. And you can see what has happened. The base has settled into the ground. Oh, it has sunk into the ground. I can't feel the bottom, but yeah, there it is right there. It is every bit of eight inches to the base. So it is sunk in the ground a good six inches. The only opening is up here on this side. This side of the base is open. When the fire is burning, the ashes fall down into that bottom. You can shovel them out of that base. I can't build a fire in that without raising it back up. If I push it over or take it apart, I'm not gonna be able to pick it up and put it back together. I don't have a boom here. I'd have to have a truck with a wrecker or something lift it. So I studied in my head about how I could possibly jack up the whole stove. You can see that it sunk in farther on this side than on that side simply because this side was open and there was less resistance in the dirt over the years as the rain softened the dirt and it slowly sunk in. As a result that stove is leaning. Oh about that degree right there. I got a notion that I can dig out right here in the front and take my car jack, you know, one with the long handle pump like this to raise it up. I got a notion I can put a block of wood under that car jack where it won't sink into the ground, fit it up under this opening, and jack the, that side of the stove up. Well, I could jack to a degree, I could probably go that many degrees right there without it tipping over. In 
bucket jacket so it's leaning at about that angle. I can put some wooden blocks under the middle. Something under the middle if I lift it up high enough to get the blocks under there. Let the jack back down, which would I'd be past the same in other words. The blocks would be towards the rear. So when I let that side back down, this side, which has been blocked under, will come up. Put some blocks under this side, jack this side up again. Make my blocks higher under here. Just kind of walk it up. If I can, you can't be around it if, if, if that falls off. I wouldn't be able to lift it back up there. So you got to be careful you don't lean it too far. But it's just a notion. I mean, I might be a, talking through my head. I got this stove from the train yard in the BOP yard in Chamblin, Georgia. When it was on a scrap iron pile and they were going to haul it away. It was actually pieces of another stove there. But some scrap iron dealer hauled it away. It was another base like that. But it was cracked. Took the best parts and saved them. But my notion is to get it jacked up and elevated about this high. And we're not talking about no five minute job. But if I can get it high enough to put some cement blocks under it, um, I guess cement blocks might be good enough. To put something under it to hold it up from sinking in. I could have set the stove up right on the ground the way I did. But I got busy working for the railroad every day and never got around to I was going to build a base for this stove and never got around to doing it. I didn't know I was going to have to be forced into an early retirement. So I never got around to that project. But I might do more videos on this stove project. Uh, and it might be a complete fail trying to jack that thing up. It might be the best way to do it is disassemble it in four different pieces, raise it up, build a pad, and get a wrecker, a tow truck or something to come out here and lift this thing up and down. Either that or a whole lot of m muscle power. And then when I got the stove jacked up to the level that I want and straight up and down vertical, I can uh, work on building my grate. So we're not going to be building a fire in the stove anytime soon, but I wanted to share that little bit of uh, wisdom with you of what I'm going to try to do. But I'd love to see that stove get back in action. Here's an old stove pipe I found over there in the pile, but it's not big around enough to fit that hole. It's a lot smaller, so I need to build an adapter to fit on here, a metal adapter to fit this in. Now I have some stove pipe. But it would be dumb to build a fire in there with it sunk in the ground six to eight inches. My car jack might not lift it, but we're going to sure give it a whirl. Not a whole lot of vlog to talk about today, but uh, at least we're discussing something. I haven't made a video in several days. Only thing I can think of is if I, if I put the jack under there crooked or wrong, I could tip this thing over. Also, if, uh, if it's too heavy, that cast iron could break. But if I put a block of wood or something on top of the jack, I think it'd probably be all right. Anyway, that's my little project discussion for today. Amazon's supposed to be bringing me a delivery today and need nobody up there to know when he comes to the door. I guess I better get back up there. I did something real stupid the other day. I don't know whether to... No, I'm not even going to tell it. But anyway, what I ordered, it ordered was a, a laser sight from my... sighting in my rifles. And that's supposed to come today. I don't know of any brand name on this stove, but it's been around. I'd say this stove is... Well, maybe we can wire brush it and get a name off of it. 
That's a serial number, 161408. Something's written right there. But I'm going to guesstimate that that stove is over 100 years old. Might be older than that. Train yards had these things for years. Burning coal. We would come in from working the train, come back to the end of the train yard, and there would be as many as 10 or 15 railroaders standing around this stove, red hot with coal burning in it. These were designed to burn coal. And uh, you couldn't get that close to it. It would actually glow red hot. About as close as I am right now, it's about as close as you'd want to get. And during the day, we had big pile bags of coal, 1,500 pound bags of coal. During the day, somebody would keep shoveling coal in that door. In the winter day, it sure was nice to stand around that stove and get warm. Anyway, that's all for my vlog today. I hope you, everybody has a good rest of the weekend. It's P. Walpar saying take care.